What's up everybody, it's your man Pots and Pans. Welcome back to another episode of Real Chef Tips. Today is part two of our plating basics series. As you can see, I have this spread of various tools. These are all of the things that chefs absolutely love. You can't get them to stop talking about it. They love to collect tools, they love to show them off, they love to use them. It's weird, I mean, look at this, look at this spoon collection. You think this is enough? That's not enough. But anyway, we got a lot to talk about today, all right? And I think you're gonna be really excited, so let's get right into it. And let's start with spoons. A spoon is your right hand man. Sure, knives are very, very important, but a spoon? This is Bonnie and Clyde right here. All right, this is, this is the ride or die. This is Jay-Z and Bay. Chefs love spoons that are all shapes and sizes and utilities. We use them to plate, we use them to eat and taste as we're cooking. Whatever the situation is, there's an appropriate spoon for the job. Now when it actually comes down to plating, most commonly you're gonna see a spoon used for ingredient placement, uh, as well as sauce design. You can use it for drizzles and spreads and even forming you know, dense items like cheese into these football shapes we call quenelles. Moving on, we have a offset spatula. Similar to a spoon, we can use it to place small ingredients and small items. We can also use it to spread sauces and just give it a little bit different of a look on the plate, a different spread, a different texture, and a graduation, graduation? Gradation of size and proportion and design and, and sheer and, 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 and whoosh, whereas a spoon is like a whoosh, this is more like a shh. It's, it's like spreading a, a good spackle on a good cock job. Not only will a chef keep his favorite spoon in his back pocket, he will also keep a spatula, a mini spatula, literally up his sleeve. Well, it's, a, it's like in his sleeve. You got a chef jacket, there's like a little pocket. So a mini one, very popular. You can also use a bigger one. You know, it's not my, you know, my, exactly my go-to. I don't need that many things going around. It's very rare that I'll use this unless I really need to scrape something off or whatever, I would rather use this or even possibly a fish spat if I need to lift something bigger. You know, it's all just, it's all, it's just up to, I don't know what to, what, I don't know what to do with that. Since we're done with the offset, let's go to a tweezer. This is also technically offset. I got another tweezer right here. This Long John Silver. <laughs> That's funny, actually. You could use this to place small items. You know, you can use this to place even smaller items, more dainty things. We're looking at like herbs, a brunoise. It's a knife cut. It's just really, really small, all right? But if something falls off, you've plated it and it falls off, it's out of whack, you don't want your greasy little hands and fingers, even though, even if you try to pick it off, it's gonna be really difficult. But we don't wanna make a mess, so we get in there, we pick that john up. It could even save your ass during cooking. Like this, I tried to crack this egg in here and an eggshell right in. What a fucking nightmare, you know? So I went and grabbed my little forceps, lifted it up. Hey, you six that shit, plier? Now, do you look like a pretentious fuck? <laughs> Absolutely. Tis with tis. You know, you want extreme results? You're gonna risk looking like an extreme nutsack. And that's fine, all right? They're cute, they're adorable. And that's the realest shit you gonna ever hear, okay? Write it down. Oh, one side note here is if you don't have, you know, these tweezers, if you don't have these tweezers, you could also use chopsticks. I'm a big fan of just getting accustomed to chopsticks. Again, you can use them for anything. Mixing, eating, picking up, plating, you know, uh, fucking drumming. Very disrespectful to people's culture, but it's fun. Next up, we got a microplane, okay? These things are phenomenal if you just wanna come in at the very end and hit some zest, some fresh ginger, maybe some lemongrass, something you, you don't really want juice for, okay? But you want that little aromatic, that nice zest. You don't always wanna use that jugo, okay? So you wanna come in with that zest, papi? That's what this is for, okay? Or you could come in and you got the bigger holes, this is great for cheese, the cheese. Don't you know what I'm saying? The queso, con queso. All right, uh, that's annoying. Next up, we got squeeze bottles, okay? We got these little Johns, we got this, this big John. Hello, John! And these big Johns right here. You know, these not always used. I mean, if you got, you're got you working with a lot of products, you know, you're doing like a big banquet or something, you could probably use this. Otherwise, it's good for like salad dressings, something you're working with a lot more products. I already said that, it's, it's annoying when you repeat yourself. But anyway, you got a small one, these are perfect for purees. And then you could just get in there on the plate, create whatever design you want, little dots, big dots, a dot with a line, 
fucking another, you know, squiggle squaggles. And it's not just like the size of the bottle. It, you can even manu manipulate, manu fucked it up. Manipulate with like a, a skizzer right here. You just come in and make that tip, cut it bigger or shorter. You can make tighter lines with tighter holes but your sauce has gotta be perfect. All right, next, so um, kind of similar to using a bottle like this, you can use a piping bag. You sit your bag in here, you fold it over the top like this, then you could fill whatever you got. You got mash, you got risotto, you know, you got polenta. I was gonna make some B-roll, I literally forgot. So, you know, I'm gonna fucked it up again, you know? So, but this is how it would work. And then once it's done, you just cut the slit in here. It's perfect. And if you're doing parties or whatever, you could do it ahead and sit it in here. Yeah, I mean, hot in plastic, what a fucking nightmare. But if you're just doing it once, not gonna kill you and it would save you a lot of time. Fucking next. Oh, fair warning, if you do put risotto or potatoes in the bag, <laughs> it's fucking liquid hot magma and you will almost die. So maybe bring a towel, okay, or wear protection. Another rule for life. Next up, we have ring molds, okay? I actually only own two, kind of a big, short, stumpy, and a long, less chody looking one, okay? But you can get ring molds in all different sizes, you know, shapes, different molds, and you can create that mold before, during, or after the cooking process. If you're thinking before, you could probably plate up something, a cold salad prep, you know, you could form a tartare inside of this, stick it on the plate, keep it in the chiller, and then when it's ready, you pull it out. During, as you can see in this clip right here, you can and cook an egg in it, anything. It doesn't have to be an egg, but you can use it to formulate the shape for that. And afterwards, you still have a lot of creative options. You know, this polenta here, you see me using this as a cutout. You chill the polenta on a plate or a sheet tray or whatever. Once it's chilled, then you cut them out and then you can grill them or sear them, saute them, whatever you want to do. And even a la minute for like a creamier polenta, you can use a ring mold to just simply let it set. And that way it's more stable so you can support other ingredients on top of it and really create that height that we're looking for in a good presentation. Now this might not seem like a tool up front, okay, but we got paper towels. Now why do we love paper towels? Well, they're absorbent, okay, and they're clean and cleanly. So, you know, if you're cooking whatever protein you have, you need it to rest anyway, right? Well, there's a lot of juices still on there, and if you don't want them to wind up on your plate, you want them to be absorbed into that paper towel, and that's an excellent use of it. If you've ever cooked spinach, you know that it's just forever dripping. You fucking sit it there forever, and then you put it on the plate, guess what? Still dripping. Next up, we have a food grade brush, okay? Ew, it's still wet. Just like using a squeeze bottle, just like using a piping bag, a brush just allows you to apply something, generally a sauce, generally a puree, in a different texture, okay? It's literally like painting. A great puree with a great brush stroke allows you to kind of like deliver your food in, in like a 3D almost appearance. If you take a look at this B-roll, what I have here is this liver pate from last week's Friday Night Bites. Watch it. What I like to do is just spoon that puree up in a little stack and then I kind of just like drag that brush stroke around but I don't, I don't even it out all the way through. I have this like little mountain on one side and then it gradiates down. It's like a black diamond into a bunny slope. Side note, black diamond kind of sounds like a stripper, no? So does bunny slope, to be honest. Generally purees that pop the most look the best for this kind of application, like this beet puree that I used here. Next up, what we're working with is uh, a sieve, okay? You know, obviously it's good for straining sauces and stocks and that kind of stuff. But when it comes to plating, this is perfect for creating a, a snowy, you know, very fine texture on either a spice, you just hold it above, tap, 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 tap. Perfect for powdered sugar as well on desserts. Just tap it in. Another great tool to have if you feel like you're always plating noodles and fucking pasta and stuff, you got this carving fork. Now, here's the deal. This has a, a curve to it. This one is not gonna be as good. I used to have a flat one. That's what you're looking for, real flat. Take a spoon, get in here on your pasta. Twist, 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 twist. You roll the pasta up, then you get it on the plate and you just drag it out. You could stack it up in a whole bunch of different ways, you know, but this allows you to create like a real tight, real toy, you know, shape to it. And it's not gonna break down, it's gonna hold. You get it? Sweet. And finally, we have a regular towel, like this one, okay? Or a serviette. 
that last finishing touch. You don't want it to look sloppy, you got oils on your hands, you got oils from the plate, you probably fuck things up along the way, you want to get rid of them, okay, you can just simply use this. I like to use these for a lot of like oil, greasy stuff, and then they're, they're one, one use, paper towels, get rid of them, okay, these I like to keep cleanly, keep around as long as possible. You take care of your towel, you're going to take care of your food, you're going to take care of your plate, and it's just going to be clean all the way around. And last but not least, the biggest and greatest tool that you can use to plate your food is you. <laughs> kind of set you up for that one. But I'm serious, you know, it, it comes down to creativity. Use your mind. You can quarantine your body, but don't quarantine your mind. So that's gonna be all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already seen part one, go back and watch that. Give it a like if you enjoyed this. If you got value from it, drop a comment. If you have any questions or comments, subscribe, all right? Hit the bell notifications so you know when the next videos come out, even though they come out the same days, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. But still, you'll, know, you'll be able to watch it first, all right? It's gonna pop up, notification, boom, click, Real Chef Mikey in the his house. Hope you're uh, really taking care of yourself. Hope you guys are surviving and thriving in this uh, quarantine times, or whenever you're watching this, I don't know. I hope you're, hope you're just good, all right? in the kitchen and in life, keep cooking it up, fam. And uh, as always, I don't like saying goodbye. So I guess I'll just say thank you, love and peace. Manuel, chef out.